Hello, it's me. Yeah, I'm just kind of sitting here being a little chatty. Touched my hair up, trimmed everything up. Now, this is after one wash. It was actually a little brighter, but hey, you know, one wash. We've been doing some stuff around here. And yeah, I'm sitting around in my pajamas. I didn't feel like doing anything like putting clothes back on after I got out of the shower. La, la, la. Anyway, we have painted the back wall. This nice soft gray. We have rearranged some stuff. Um, just because. Wanted to see what would happen. I've taken some cardboard and some white paper and made myself a small reflector behind the camera so that the lighting is a little different. And Mr. helped with that quite a bit. He's currently a better engineer than I am. But I figured while I was just putzing around and playing with stuff that I've got, well, some of it's stuff that I've got, some of it's stuff that I've had, some of it is stuff that I just got. I did this fairly intense um, declutter in my palettes and stuff. My son's oldest daughter, who was 18, came to stay with us. She's from a long ago prior relationship. But she wanted to come stay with us during quarantine because people were giving her raz about stuff and having hissy fits because school was closed and all that stuff. This is the Elf Illuminating Putty Primer. I decided to try it out and so far I love it. I think it's wonderful. Probably should have put it on earlier but like I said I just got out of the shower. And you, you can't really put it on while you're in the shower, you know? I've rearranged my desk setup some. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but I did. And let's see. While things were on sale recently, I got the Elf Earth and Ocean palette. I got the chocolate palette. I've already done one film with Earth, Earth and Ocean. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I've already done one with Earth and Ocean. Um, I went through my other palettes, though, and I started going through and going, okay, this one is not my favorite, but it's still a good palette, dot, dot, dot. So my eldest granddaughter that's here is like now swimming in palettes and I picked up a few that are a little it was a little more of a curated pick kind of thing rather than just oh, oh look grab well some of it was an oh look grab but not as much I picked up some dupes of some classics off of C color and I picked up some profusion pieces and I got these elf palettes because they were on sale and I wasn't going to miss them this time. And I'm still hoping that, you know, there's a couple of palettes that I want to get, but they're on the expensive side. And I'm hoping that by the time I actually have the money to work with, that the Smoky Glow palette will still be there. I'm going to hope. Anyway, so a lot of the palettes that 
I had that I just really didn't get into using as much are now with my eldest granddaughter that's here. I have another one back on the other coast. She's considerably older. Well, she'll be 23 this year, I think. I have to keep track. Or maybe she's still 20. I don't know. I remember when she hit 21. And I remember seeing the party when she hit 22. So, yes, I'm a lousy grandma. Okay, okay. Yeah, we figured that part out. There you go. Anyway, I figured I'd do some updates and stuff while I sat here and played with my toys. Because I've got some very nice toys. Finished my English class that I was in. It was the 359 advanced fiction writing class. And I came out with a thousand points out of a thousand points, so a solid A. And that put my GPA at 3.73. So I'm good with that. And then... What else is there? Um, we got the rest of the room painted too, not just the wall behind me, but the wall behind me is the gray. The rest of the walls are this kind of interesting, not quite butter yellow. It's not that bright, but it's, it's kind of a buttery yellow, you know, but it's not like lemon or, or canary or anything real right. It's still nice and calm, which is good for a bedroom. One of these days I'm actually going to learn how to do a live feed and I'll find somebody who's crazy enough to want to monitor the questions for me so I don't have to like keep track of all the buddy heads by myself. Now, unfortunately, like most of the other elf palettes, there are no names here. I'm using this one. First one on the center row. It's, yes, it's currently upside down, so this is technically the left side. And then, let's see, what I'm do next, what I'm do next is probably this one down here. Because it's pretty. Um, my next class is on business writing because I'm currently I'm currently in an English fiction focused writing class uh, program. But 
they decided since I had so many overlapping classes into two other disciplines that I could do a double minor. So I've got business writing as one minor and sociology as the other one. Other minor. So we'll see how that goes. I'm due to be finished with all this stuff sometime about mid next year. We will see. Well, that was the original estimate anyway. But they were counting on me to regularly be able to do two classes at a time. And I proved to be hard put to do two classes at a time because of my health. So they just said, yeah, you'll be finished when you're finished. However, they are already trying to put me into counseling sessions for a master's program. And I'm going, guys, would you mind if I finish the bachelor first? And they said, oh, no, we don't mind. You've got to finish the bachelor first anyway. And I'm like, okay, then, then please back up off my backside a couple of feet, you know? You remember social distance? And they, it's like, but we're on the phone. And I said, don't start with me. <laughs> Let me tell you about your social distance, hon. You're too close. <laughs> I have not gotten to a point where I'm thinking about master's program. But that's what they want me to do. And I'm going, wow. Now, I had not had the intention originally to go there to look at doing a master's program. But I'm also looking at, why the hell not? Let's just go for broke. You know. Let's just go for broke. With a master's, it's easier to do things like possibly get a position teaching so that I could like maybe tutor some people or maybe work a class or two at the community college that wouldn't be so much of a stress that it would like throw my health issues into a tailspin. I'll have to talk to my doctors and all that stuff too, see what they think. Of course, I could always do it on Skillshare, which is another one of those online things. And, you know, but you have to have your certs to do the classes. And if I did the master's program and got a certificate as a teaching level person, I could then do that. Yeah, that's looking pretty specific. Thing. Now that was this one. Now I'm playing with this one. I'm going, you know, we it might be fun to to Stick another poke in the eye of some of my family who told me I'd never make it through college anyway. Well, the ones that were the most adamant about it have already crossed over, so they already know that I have poked them in the eye with this. And 
and I'm enjoying it. No, really. I am actually enjoying it. I am enjoying poking them in the eye just a bit. Now I'm taking that first color that I started with and putting that under here just a little bit. And doing this, like usual, I will probably wreck some of it doing my concealer. But that's okay, because I can always run the brush under here again. Now, I've been having some trouble with my hands cramping a bit lately, because I've still been working on my novel, and I am so glad I am currently out of the fiction writing at this level currently for a while. I'll be doing business writing, which means I can work on my stories without having to stop and go back towards the beginning to pull off pieces for the class because it's got to be consecutive to the class for people to like review and you get your peers to review and all that stuff. It's got to be, you know, in order. But it's like the one that I've been working on the most, I only needed about 15 to 20 pages of that one that I had been working on the most. And when I got, and that was the middle class, and when I got... To, by the time I got through with the middle class to the end class, and they wanted, you know, new writing from the same story, and I'm going, but where do I want to cut at, and what section do I want to give them, because I was at almost 60 pages on that one. So I took a story plot that I had created for another class and just started the next story <laughs> and gave them that. <laughs> and I've got 20 pages on that now. And it's like, I'll just keep going. I will just keep going and explain to them why I did it that way. And if they can't handle that, well, then, foo. Anyway, I came out with an A in both classes. Nobody fussed about which story was which. I got the, the review portion with your peers is where they go through and read and see if there's anything they think may need corrected or changed, you know, anything that's like looking like it's a little rough. So, and we all do it for each other. Well, technically we each take two stories to work. And then we're supposed to have enough people in the class that each of us gets two reviews. I've done, occasionally I've done three reviews because somebody only had one. So I'd go in and do a third review so that they had two opinions to work from. I have yet in a couple of my classes had the same courtesy extended it's like first the teacher goes through and does a review and then after you correct it after the teacher teacher's review then your your fellow students go through and give you what for now we are told to be polite and reasonable 
That does not always happen. Some people just don't have a polite function in their makeup. I think the hardest part about being polite, though, is when you realize that no matter how polite you want to be, you're going to be stretching. Because not everybody writes beautifully. Some people write beautifully. Some people, after it's been edited, edited a few times, you could call it written beautifully. But not everybody writes beautifully. So it becomes a matter of excellent business for diplomatic writing to keep from creating an incident in the class. Oh, the other thing is you need to do a critique of the story and then and then also the grammatic stuff and all that stuff and and so you know you're trying to not only be nice about the story you're having to not scream and rip your hair out when there, there, there becomes an issue. I may not always sound like it, but I am a grammar freak. I don't always speak correct grammar. However, if I'm a write it, I'm a write it good. And one of the things that drives me absolutely bizarre over writing is things like there, 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 your, your, your. And putting commas in weird places. Yes, I am smearing this concealer as far as it wants to go. If it wants to cover all the red patches on my face, it can have it. But you see what I mean about having to fix up the under eye area a little bit after doing this. Remember people, without glasses on, I'm pretty near blind. See, lousy grammar when I'm speaking. However, that is local dialect for my relations in the Carolinas. And when you're having to look at something and you're, you're going, okay, I understand why they put the comma in, in the rest of the sentence, because it's a sort of list of things. 
However, when you get to the last item in the list, you don't need to put a comma between that last item in the list and what the hell it is you're describing. It just, yeah, no. Quit. Stop it. Just, no. Not doing it. This is not where that goes. Just don't do it. Do stuff like that, you make my head hurt. You don't need to put a pause before the item you are describing. There was one where there's a book I'm currently reading that she does that. And I'm like, girlfriend, you're making my head ache. Now, I pick up a lot of books off of the Kindle freebie list. And I pick up a lot of the books off the freebie list because most of the ones on the freebie list that are like all the time freebies, if it's not the classics, it's usually the first book of a new author who's just started putting their series up. I'm looking at my competition. I just am. I'm looking at the competition. And <clears throat> looking at the competition is a good idea. Plus, I have found some amazing writers. There's this guy in Australia named Ashley Capes. He's got a series on a guy that was born rather mysteriously along with his brother. And before he got any real information about a lot of people in his family, his mom was murdered. He didn't even know what his name was. She just called him son or whatever. And this guy is roaming all over the place now, relative adult, doing whatever it is he has to do to survive. And trying to figure out why he has interesting abilities that nobody else seems to understand. Now, his brother also has these interesting abilities, but his brother decided to do some exploration a different, on a different tack. So they're not exactly together at the beginning of this. However, they named each other. And this poor guy's brother named him Never. And if you like really, really good fantasy puzzle stories, you have got to go read Ashley Capes. Dude is excellent. One of the most exciting people I've run into on <clears throat> that particular venue of how to find books so far. He's amazing. I'm hoping someday mine will actually be there. Now, one of the things that I have discovered as part of this class is that trying to find 
I mean, you can publish yourself and go through Amazon and put it on their stuff and have it ready for Kindle and all that hoo-hoo. Or you could do it through other self-publishing services. Or you can try and do it, the st my thumb has decided to cramp. You can try and do it the standard way. See, it just folds up and won't move. Which is really annoying. Makes it hard to hold the pencil. You know, you can try going, because there's huge lists of agents, and there are people on the list of agents, so you can see what kind of writers they normally work with anyway. So they've got a sample of their clients on their advert so that you can tell if it's somebody, you know, if the agent is somebody who's at least aimed in the direction you're trying to go. But let me tell you, for those of us who are considering doing the standalone book, that's getting kind of hard. There are a lot of the agents now who won't even look at a standalone. They are only looking for series. Which makes it really hard to get beyond first base. And I'm going, but guys, I don't want to do a series. Some of these series books are just, yeah, no. I don't want to do a series. And I'm looking at my current stories and going, okay. Yeah, if I think about it hard enough, maybe I could at least get a trilogy out of it. But that's not where I really want to go. So. It's one of those. Oh. Excuse me just a second. So now I'm going, but I don't want to. I'm stubborn. Okay, I'm stubborn. Have we figured that part out yet? Have we really? Do we have this down? I am a stubborn fuzzy. Okay. Oh, I lose that thumb again. I mean, this is so annoying. It just really is. Okay. Oh, by the way, yes, I've been working on doing the, the nail polish thing, and it's sort of working. Sort of. I woke up this morning, though, and there was this strip missing on that finger, and then this happened. It just broke off, and, and pieces started falling. So, yeah, eh, fun. I was not impressed. So tomorrow I get to, it takes me several days to actually finish my nails. 
because I have to wait in between thumb cramps and stuff to be able to hold the brushes on the little bitty bottles. Puppy hair. Yeah. They're cute, but bleh. Now, this is the Elf Fresh Flawless Palette. It's, it's, it's kind of got some blush and kind of got some bronzer, but they're kind of pale. And I'm going, yeah, I can kind of work with that. The only blush palette I had originally from e.l.f. was their cream blushes. And it's not what I'm doing right now. I prefer doing cream stuff when I just want to run a little smear of something over my sunscreen <laughs> and and take off. And then I've got the illuminating palette. This one I actually got as a freebie because I got the 25 bucks on an order. And I'm going, I'll take it. Thank you very much. I can work with that, you know? I've got a couple of their singletons too of the highlighters but I figured if they're going to send it to me because I spent 25 bucks to do things like get the hot chocolate palette and the uh, and the earth and ocean palette yeah I'll let them send it yeah I, I, I can be magnanimous that way. Now, all of the stuff that's in this little illuminator palette is pretty subtle. Really subtle. But it's not so bad. Give all this a little spray down. Mm. Okay, so far so good. Yes. Put a little more of this on the waterline. This is a bronze pencil from Clean Color. It's called Mellow Gel and it's in bronze. Now, like a lot of these pencils, how they work seems to be pretty much hit and miss. Some of them come out beautiful. Some of them come out weak. Some of them wouldn't last if you nailed them down. Now, this is the sugar waterproof micro liner that came in my Ipsy bag. Now, I like trying out new 
eyelashes. But this thing, the tip, they're not kidding when they say microlining. Anybody who's ever been a, worked in graphic arts and had a Pigma pen at like a 0.03, yeah. The only way to get any real width of line is to really lay this thing down because otherwise it's literally like using a graphic arts 0 .03 pen. It's awful trying to get a decent line. I love the way it works. I love the way it flows. I love the coloring. It's a really nice black. But, damn. The other thing I'm not thrilled with is every time I use it, when I go to switch eyes, I end up having to shake it some. Now, I don't know if that's because it's a sample and it wasn't that full to begin with or what, but yes, I'm going to try using this hand on this side because my right thumb has decided it is not going to play. It did this the other day. And I had to stop what I was doing and ask my husband to come over and cut up my meat at the dinner table. Because I could not cut my own food. I want to talk about make you feel pitiful. I mean, it's bad enough that you hurt. It's bad enough that you have to struggle to do things for yourself. But to add that little bit of humiliation in, just about tips me over the edge sometimes. It really does. The only thing that kept it from being totally humiliating is that it was my husband, we were all by ourselves, and he would never say a bloody word. Not a word. He just come over and say, here you go, sweetheart. And then go back to his dinner. And, you know, I hope that I make like bunches and bunches and bunches of bucks so I can do some special things for him. For putting up with all this. Oh, got mascara up on the eyelid. Ah. Well, that was no fun. He has had to put up with a lot. When I had my leg surgery and was literally in bandages from my toes to my hip joints. He was the one who took care of all the stuff you normally would have to take care of for a child. Because I literally couldn't bend to do it. Now, let's see if I can manage to do this.
Now, when my muscle flappage and annoyance got, gets to be too much, I use a recently legalized substance that works well on relieving tension in the muscles. It is not something I have to go necessarily to a pharmacy to get. Now, one fraction of this substance works really, really, really well on my general fibro. Some people it works, some people it doesn't. However, the other fraction is what works to soothe my muscle spasms when I start having milk. So, I have this medication in a couple of different forms. One of them is strictly the C faction, fraction, and that's the one that works most of the time on my general fibro pain. The other one, the T fraction, works better when I start having these kind of spasms. And I've got one medication that has a equal percentage of both in its particular form being basically a resin and with that I'm able to get both fractions in enough volume to feel better. Why am I being so cagey about it? Because some places this is not a legal substance so I'm not naming names. If anybody wants to know for sure what I'm talking about and what materials I use, you can always go to Instagram and DM me. Anyway, this is the look for the day. And let me know what you think. I'm having entirely too much fun with the new elf palette. The C color palettes that I picked up are dupes of pretty standard favorites. Yeah, I've got one that's called Feverish that looks a bit sultry. And that kind of thing. So I'll be playing with those too. I'm trying to pick up some of the dupes for some of this stuff, partially because I want to be able to keep up with some of the other people who have these palettes and want to do stuff with them. And if we decide we want to do something together, I would like to have the stuff available without breaking the budget. Now that's another thing, speaking of breaking the budget. There is apparently a current trend on the tube where basic tutorials are kind of on the downswing. People are really, really, really 
pushing for reviews. Channels with lots of reviews are getting a lot more attention. Now, there are some people who do some reviews, but even some of the bigger channels that I have seen, you know, like Kaylee MUA with the spelling that everybody looks at and goes, what the heck is that? From Ireland. She's got all kinds of followers. She does all kinds of, of um, effects work and all that. And she's got her own um, collaboration piece with Sosu and that kind of thing. But even she has started add, adding things like murder mysteries because the tutorial thing is a little less sought after right now. Now, granted, most times this stuff goes in cycles. However, we have to think of something in between the cycles to keep people coming in. I mean, I've been doing my channel since August of 2018, and I still haven't broken 200. Even though I get a pretty good watch load and, and some decent comments and such, but it's mostly people that I already know. It's like, it, it's my, my general community level that are the ones keeping me going. I get very few new subscribers and a lot of the new subscribers wait until I subscribe to theirs and then drop. And I'm like, you creep. Anyway, <laughs> or I get people that subscribe and say, let me tell you how to get all kinds of followers. And I'm going, no, I'm not buying them. You're not selling them to me. No, <laughs> we're not going there. But I've got to start thinking of what else I can do that would bring in People who not only like makeup, but like this other thing. The murder mystery line seems to be pretty well full up. Um, there's a bunch that I've seen recently where they're doing their makeup and chatting along about this murder mystery. Now, Paulina was doing that for a little while, but it was beginning to bum her out, so she stopped. But there's a bunch of people now that have picked that up and are running with it. And I'm going, okay, I need a different shtick. They've got that one. There's plenty of people already on that shtick. So, Anybody got any bright ideas? I mean, if I'm going to read my story work, I'm putting that on Patreon. Yeah, Patreon. Because if I'm going to read it, somebody will pay for it. Um, I expect to make some money off of my word crafting. Yes, please. Thank you. In any case, if you have an idea and aren't using it yourself, let me know. If you have an idea and want somebody else to do it too, let me know. As long as it's not costing me a bucket load of money to do reviews, I'm pretty open to suggestion up to a point. This granny is not going to be naked anywhere. 
at least not on camera. I think my husband might have an objection. And again, so would the local cops. And since my grandkids live in the house, dot, 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 yeah, no. Not worth the hassle. Anyway, there's our look. There's the retouched hair with all the haircut and all the floofies and all of that. Let me know what you think. Think of some good ideas. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Be good. Mm -hmm.